and now and I'm doing these back to back, like literally back to back. Like I have these, the four six still on my bed, where I put them. So I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But yeah, here is part two. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And like with part one, there's two series written by the same author. I'm going to show them off right away. Both of them are, it's kind of one of those things, like, like with the Grant Morrison books, both are good. Like, both are just, like, just as good as the, um, well, not just as good, because one, one I do favor over the other. But they're still both recommends from me. And that is, right from me, and that is Post Americana and Maestros, both written and drawn by Steve Scrose, with colors done by Dave Stewart, and <laughs> lettering done by Phonographics. And that is so funny. It's the same exact Create a team for both series. Yeah, same, same exact. N n n it's like it's a old oh, color flash done by Nathan Fairbairn. No, all three. I, I just named the same for each book. And both of them are collect seven issues of their series, of, of their res respective mini series. It's really funny. What's kind of, what's also kind of funny is that Maestro is a lot thicker than, well, not a lot thicker, but it's much thicker than Maestro, or than Post Marconi is. And Post Americana is seven issues, right? It's double check. I'm mean, double check chat. Double check chat. Double. Yep, it is. Double check that to make sure. Yeah, both are, both are seven issues. I, I, funnily enough, I used to think that when I used to think, I always thought that before I checked again, that Maestro's was eight issues, but it's not because of how much because how thick it is. Yeah, it's just seven issues. I think issue one was just a lot longer. Now, Maestro's is a fantasy series dealing with a wizard, and it's kind of like his his father, or I think it was a biological father, maybe his stepdad, whatever. He's part, he's part of this, like, fan fantastical world, and he introduces his son to it. I think his son, like, he was the chosen one kind of thing. There's something about the son that, you know, he has, like, magical powers, and he has to go here for some reason. And it was very good. I mean, the only downside was, again, is, and this is my, my second reread, I did feel like it was a bit too, like, mean-spirited, kind of, like, they, they really, really want you to, like, it's kind of like, they go through a lot, the, the main kid goes through a lot, so, so he can, like, not, not redeem himself, but so that like, he can, do so like, really hate the villain, you really want him to overcome the, the, that, like, all that, and defeat the villain kind of thing. Like, overcome all these hard, uh, hards, hardships, and finally defeat the villain, but it kind of, like, it, it gets a bit too mean-spirited. It's another book that I feel the same way with, but both of them, I still like them regardless. I, I think they're both still incredible, um, comics. They're both under, and both underrated, too. And if you, if you, if you like Steve Scrooge, you artwork, you got that here, too. But you also got something he's writ actually written, too. There actually, there's a third series that he's written, I'm sorry, a third series that he's drawn, called re and Guard, but Brian K. Vaughn wrote the book. And then we have Post Americana, which is probably, a, like, Maestro's is definitely, like, more people are going to enjoy Maestro's than are going to enjoy Post Americana, because there are certain, like, like, you could tell they're trying to go, like, here for that book, but if you're going to, if you're going to easily ignore, like, politics, like, oh, this is trying to, like, like Trump, if, if you can ignore that, this is a pretty good series. I think this is, like with We Stand and Guard, a nice little post uh, a post apocalyptic comic. That isn't that's like, little as in, like it's only seven issues and We Stand and Guard is only six issues. Like, they're both mini series, they're both pretty quick and it's all in one too, which is nice. Yeah, this one this one I do think is good. Um I, I don't think any of them like yeah, you could make it I think Maestro's is a lot more um cancel that page. I think Maestro's is a lot more, here's the artwork, he tells a very crazy, very crazy artwork, he likes to draw like really crazy, out and it's kind of like, almost like kind of gross kind of things, like, like the monsters are kind of gross, and like the you know, artwork is like a gross out almost thing, but not, not like too terribly gross kind of thing, like it's not like gross out humor, it's just kind of like the, the monsters are kind of like they, in like really, Close up detail almost kind of thing, that, that kind of thing. Think of it as like how SpongeBob will have those close ups, like kind of almost like that same kind of feeling, but not as bad as that. Surprisingly enough, you know, this is very mature and SpongeBob is a kid show, and SpongeBob has more disturbing close ups than this does. Very, and it's not close ups, I'm just trying to say like it's kind of like that, like 
like overly detailed kind of artwork kind of thing. Which is, I mean that in the best possible best possible way. Yeah, my choice is definitely a lot more like it's a fantasy series, a lot more straightforward. Nothing like in here that's no like lecturing or anything like that. But post Marikana, you could argue it's trying to lecture you a lot more than um, it should maybe. But again, I I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's too preachy, nor do I think it's annoying at all. I think it's the perfect amount. And sometimes it really stretches that, stretches that um, the line between, or crosses almost crosses like borderline, you know. But I don't think so. And Post Americana is definitely, I, I I definitely had more fun reading Maestro's than I did Post Americana, but both series I do I just still like overall. Like Post Americana, I think I did. As it went along, I enjoyed it more and more. But it's like, it was like, it was like, like, like first issue was a bit too slow for me, or something like that. But no, nevertheless, I do, I do like both series. Um, then we have Bolero, and this is one that is they say they say in the back here it's Eternal Sunshine meets um, Lock and Key. And that is definitely a good comparison to me. But I would say. Just thing is, like, each own sunshine is the best comparison. Like, you, you, you don't even have to add lock and key. Like, it's, if, you, if you've seen the movie, each own sunshine, you want more of, like, a outlandish, crazy, like, out there romance uh, story, then this is where you should, one of the many places you should go. It's, and this one collects one through five, and I really appreciate this. They collect the image, the image anthology issues. Like they had like little stories in the Image Comics anthologies that came out for their 20th anniversary. They had like Image Comics anthologies. A lot of big names wrote stories for them. And something like this, uh, Wyatt Kennedy had two series, two little stories that were in there that are part of the Bolero series, but they collected in the trade. I think they should have just waited for every series. Like, like the Department of Truth, they should have waited for that volume came, to come out. That one came out in December of, of 2022. So they definitely. Should have. I don't, I don't know when the anthology came out, but yeah, it's, it's, it's annoying for me because someone like Jeff Johns, like each all twelve issues, he had a story in there, and they don't have like an, they don't have an official collection. I think what they should then is they should just come out with a huge ass hardcover, and they had everything. Like yeah, okay, this one they I would double dipped, but who cares? I wouldn't have. This is one I do recommend for everyone. Like I think everyone like that will enjoy this series here. They don't like that something that's too confusing, too crazy. Then I think you, I think you will like this one. It's not, it's not confusing at all. It's like I'm confusing as to what the point of it is. Like it's a kind of like why they're doing it, why they're telling the story this way. But if you kind of not ignore that, but you kind of like you don't. If it, it's a, that's not, it's not a deal breaker to you. I think you will enjoy this series. Then we have another thick book. This one, this one was five issues, and it was like... This is another thing I like about Image Comics. Five issues and seventeen ninety nine. That is crazy for a, big, for a book this thick. Like, this would be twenty nine ninety nine for Marvel. And probably thirty nine ninety nine from DC Comics. I always like, throw shade at them, because I think that... Cause it, it always it just proves my point further and further. That Marvel and DC do overprice their books. Even if, like, something like this. Like, Avengers World. This is... A very thick book for th for forty bucks, and I I, I get those are free because my local library is coffee, but you get it. It's forty bucks for twenty three issues plus a plus like two pages out of like of like ten pages, not even um, from Marvel Now point one, but twenty three issues, uh, and it's only forty bucks. So as far as like Marvel books go, that's good pricing, but in general, eh, no, not really. This is Sacred Creatures. It's because, um... Oh, isn't... Well... Let's say it's 30 issues. Let's promote it up to 30 issues. No, even then, because I want to say... I don't know. But and I think Marvel, with their complete collections, back in the day, they had a price pricing. It was like thirty nine ninety nine, and it only only went to 50 bucks for like, books like Spider-Verse. There, like, there was an exception, because it was Spider-Verse, and you know, it was the Spider-Man tax. And it was a lot of... It was, it was almost like... Was over 500, I think it was almost 600 pages. So, yeah, you don't want to make it the same as something like the complete collection of Deadpool. 
that was $34.99, sure, but it cost a lot less, like a lot less. In comparison, at least in comparison to Spider-Verse. But anyways, because, like, I want to say Deadpool was, like, 440 and then, like, in general, I'm saying, I'm talking about the Daniel Way series, and then Spider-Verse was, like, 600 pages. But, like, this one, especially, I, I really... Oh, the, the pricing was pretty good. And this is the kind of like this is a weird pricing. It's twenty two ninety nine. I don't know why I kind of just made it nineteen ninety nine, but even then, it's good pricing. Kind of like, I mean, if it compares, if you compare it to other Image comics, you know, kind of stretches that limit, but it stretches that kind of thing. But I, I think in general, no, I, I think it's still good. Even compared to other Image comics, it's still good pricing. And this is Sacred Creatures. This one is the, it's basically the Seven Deadly Sins version of Wicked and the Divine, where it's, they take place, where the Seven Deadly Sins exist in the real world, and they interact with mortal beings. And this one does definitely, I think Wicked and the, Wicked and the Divine is made for a specific audience. This is more for everyone. Now, it is rated M, almost all these are rated M for sure. Like, in general, I think the only one that's less it's T plus, teen plus to mature rated, so definitely for older audiences. Um, but for that audience, like for the mature audiences, anyone can enjoy this book. I I want to see more. Now this is like with Snot Girl. This is is it does end on the cliffhanger. And it's kind of like oh when there's gonna be issue seven. Yeah, when never because yeah, I mean nothing's been announced for it yet. So it must be like with Snot Girl. It must be canceled. Then it must be at, at least on hiatus. This one is written by Pablo Raimondi with artwork done by Klaus Janssen and co-written by Klaus Janssen. Actually, there is artwork. It's kind of funny. Here, let's go over all of them. All the names. So, Pablo Raimondi and Klaus Janssen wrote the book. For the contemporary scenes, the artist is Pablo. But Klaus Janssen... Um, oh, sorry. So, uh, Chris Chuckery... Brian Reber and Hi-Fi Studios with the colors for the contemporary scenes. But the ancient past scenes, the artist is Klaus Jansen with Dean White doing the colors. It's pretty cool. So if you want like, um, if you, if you really like Klaus Jansen artwork, you get that here. But, you know, not as often as you should, honestly. And Bolero, the art artist was Luana Vecchio. But written by Wyatt Kennedy. And I didn't do the artwork for this. I don't think I showed it for, um, Post Marcana either. I I'll play, like, a speed round. You know, I'm like, did it the last time. Yeah, who cares? Self-made, well, I, I care. Uh, Self-made is written by Matt Groom with artwork done by someone for a gato. They put the, almost always, they will almost always, see yeah. uh, layouts done by Eduardo Perigato. Pencils and inks all done by the same guy, and colors by Marcelo Costa. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know why they don't, um... Because they, they put the, um, credits page at the end. Almost like it is credits. It's kind of weird. Now this one, the main comparison I've always made to the series is Avatar. It's kind of like... There's a... We just saw, was like a fantastical world. That's in, like... It's, it's one of those, like, in-universe things where it's kind of like a, it's a video game in the self-made universe, but they, but the, um, series itself is more sci-fi than fantasy, because it deals with like a video game, and it's a bunch of people that, like, because it, 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 it's becoming more, more and more real, and there's one, you know, one person that wants to take control of it, like, kind of one of those things, a lot more interesting than making it sound, um, and this is for anyone, like, I do re recommend this for everyone. I think anyone can enjoy this one. Um, there's a lot of extras in the back, so I would say there's not, not a whole lot, honestly. Like, it's at least not what my thought would be, you know, kind of thing. Um, but the artwork is very good, the story is very good. I do think that we, I want I, 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 the first time I read it, I didn't like the, the fancy elements. I thought that it was a bit too slow there, and I was kind of glad that it ventured outside of the fantastical elements. 
But my second reread, I was like, I kind of like the fantastical elements a lot more this time. Um, so this is an all-around fantastic series. But yeah, someone wanting, something, something, someone wanting fantasy, like they read the first few pages, like, oh, I want more of fantasy, what's going on here? You will be a bit disappointed. I believe they, they do, like, conclude that story, though. But it's a lot more like, you know, it takes place in the present day more than, than in, in the past. But I think the past gets, gets from what I remember, the more and more I think about it, I believe the past gets, gets enough screen time, if, if you will. At least to conclude that storyline that they're telling in the fantastical element world. And last, and not least, but we have Supper Club. And this is one that is, if you like, for only for Ring of Telgemeier fans. Which I think anyone can enjoy Ring of Meyer's books. But this is, if you want something that's more like, um, young adult oriented, this will be, this is Rep Your Alley. Now this is Team Plus, I don't remember what there was in here to make it Team Plus, honestly. I don't know if it, it must have been like some like, you know, sex talk or whatever, maybe some mild language. This does follow seniors, like high school seniors, so it does make sense that it would be Team Plus. But all around, I would say this is pretty like, I would say like PG-13, honestly. Um, but this is definitely a more contemporary story. It's more like down to earth, more... Uh, like, it's a, it's a slice of life kind of thing, like a coming of age type tale. I think this does do it the best way. Not in the best way, but I think this is done really well. And this is 232 pages. It's a pretty thick book. Um, and we'll take a look. It's, a, it's an original graphic novel, so it's not, so this one, like, collecting the issues one through six. But this is all in one. But all in all, I think all the books, I t all 12 I picked, I think everyone should read. Now, again, this is not the best of my collection, so I, I, I didn't mention Outcast. Outcast isn't featured. Uh, I haven't finished Outcast. It's something like, um, I, I don't own all the volumes, but if I did, Walking Dead, like, that's not a good example. Um, but it, it is, uh, my point is, not the best of what I own. Obviously, there's other series I'll be showing off, and I haven't even picked up all the ones I want to pick up for the Library had it. Now, now I picked it up. But I think I do have like, the best of the best. And the ones I have left are kind of like ones like, yeah, I enjoyed them enough, but not like groundbreaking. But like even more so, like, like, like these were above average. The ones I would be getting are kind of average kind of thing. But that, as I say, it's that. And yes, some days I will probably do a the worst, the worst image comics in my collection video. Like with the Man Eaters and Infidel and Home. But I still enjoy them, except for Infidel. Like, like Home and Many Ears. I hope that they're good. But kind of like the inverse of this kind of thing. So I do have at least three of them that I could pick. That as say is that though.